Hello, in this video I'm going to be talking about matrix decomposition. Uh, another word for that might be factorization. Um, let me talk a little bit about why factorization is useful in a context that maybe you've seen before. Um, factorization, which is just a synonym, is, uh, means that we're taking some more complicated piece and representing it as a few simpler pieces that are multiplied together. And so I can give one example of that. Maybe I have this line here, y equals negative x cubed plus 7x squared minus 14x plus 8. <coughs> and, uh, and if I multiply that, or if I factor it, I can multiply these three parts together. That's 4 minus x times 2 minus x uh, times 1 minus x. And uh, when I do that, I can immediately see some interesting things about that line. Um, in particular, uh, I know that whatever x is either 4, 2, or 1, then this whole thing is going to be 0, right? So even though I haven't plotted this line yet, I can visualize that, oh, the line is straight across zero at, at those four points. And maybe I'm just going to do that to demonstrate. So I'm going to create a data frame like so. And I may have my uh, X column. And then we have my Y column, which maybe I'll add some noise in there. Uh, you can see I already kind of created the noise of the same size right there. And let me just peek at this. And then if I plot this, I'm going to say data frame dot plot dot line or dot scatter. Uh, I have to actually say, well, my x is my x column and my y is my y column. And I get this right here. And, and so let me just try to look at all the places it crosses 0. So it crosses 0 roughly at 1. That was anticipated. It crosses 0 roughly at 2. That was anticipated. And it crosses 0 roughly at, at, at 4, also anticipated. All because I did this kind of factorization. And so the same thing is going to be true with uh, matrices, right? If I have a matrix and I want to understand it, um, I can often uh, see what's going on if I represent it as a few matrix matrices uh, uh, multiplied together. And so that's what was on this reference page here that I'm showing. It's all of these different matrix decompositions. And uh, the really important one, I think the first one you should probably learn, is called the principal component analysis. And this is based on an algorithm and kind of a process called the singular value decomposition. And so that's what we're going to ultimately work towards. We're going to see, well, how can we um, do this operation, kind of break it down, and then we're eventually going to see why it's useful. It's going to let us do things like um, uh, compress our matrices, right? If I have a big ma a matrix with, with a lot of data, uh, can I save it in a file where I have maybe not as much information and, and maybe I'm saving a slightly different data, but, uh, but I can save a lot of space? So before I get into that, I want to talk a little bit about matrix, matrix sizes, uh, because we're going to be multiplying matrices together. And, uh, and I, even though I don't want to get into the math of that, I want to know some basic things like, well, what is it valid to multiply two matrices together? And what will be the size of the output? So I'm going to create a few matrices here. I'm going to say a equals uh, numpy.random.dot.dot.douse. Uh, Let me just see. Oh, not, not that. It's normal. OK. Normal. Right, so I have that, and, and I can say what size I want. So let's say I say something like size equals, um, you know, I don't know, nine by seven. Right, so I have that nine by seven thing. I, I could put it in a, in a data frame if I want. See it a little bit better. I, I have these nine rows and seven columns. Let me create a few more. I'm gonna do this, oops, like so. And create a few more. Um, I'll, I'll say this one is like, you know, 6 by uh, by 14, and I don't know, the last one will be 14 by 3. All right, so those are my three matrices. And, um, and, and let me look at the shapes of these. So I have my three matrices here. <coughs> and um, actually, I'll just do this in the same cell. I'm going to print off, print off their three shapes. So A dot shape, B dot shape and c dot shape. Okay, and, um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to multiply them all together using the dot product. So I'm going to say a dot b dot c, and uh, I get an error. There's a problem, and it's kind of confusing what's going on here. But basically for a, a matrix multiplication to succeed, if I have a big chain of them, um, what I need to have is that the columns of one matches the rows of the next one, right? So, so here's my problem, right? These two numbers are different. This part was fine. And, um, and so let me think, how could I fix this up? I guess I could make these both seven. 
right? So I kind of have the columns here match the rows of the next one. That would work fine. I can multiply those three together. I could add another one, right? So let's say I did this. If I had to have another one, I want to multiply that by D. Um, and, and so basically, what, what am I doing here? Um, I know that the number of rows has to match the number of columns of, of the one right before it. So this has to be three. And, and this one could really be anything I want, right? So um, I could say, you know, it's five. And maybe let me just put all this in a data frame so we can see it. And I could say that that's five. I can kind of freely change that. I can make it 10 if I want. And, um, and so basically all of these numbers here are kind of tied together. But I can mess around with the, the first the number of rows in the first one however I want and the number of columns in this one I want. So maybe I'll say like, oh, I'm going to have four rows for my first one and maybe you know six here. I can kind of mess with those however I want. And, and do you notice something when I'm, let me just try to look at this dot shape here. So when I'm looking at the sizes of all these things, these numbers here are what I check to see if the matrix multiplication is trying to succeed, right? Does do these two are these two numbers equal? Are these two equal? Are these two equal? These two numbers can be whatever they want, and those are actually going to decide uh, the size of the final thing. <coughs> so it's really like all of this is boiling down to. If I just print off the shape of all of this. Let me just do this. You can kind of see what happened here, right? This four came down here. This six ten down here. That's what happens when you multiply a bunch of these things together, right? And so it's useful just to kind of have some sort of sense if you're seeing these matrix multiplications. The first thing you want to have an intuition for is well, how are the shapes going to work out without even getting into all the number crunching? Okay, so that was a little bit of background on the matrices, and 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 we're going to need to think about that as we're doing our um, decompositions to understand what's going on. Uh, let's actually try to do one, and that's the single value decomposition. Eventually, we're going to be using that, doing that with this PCA. A module, not in this video, but in an upcoming one. Uh, for starters, I want to do it the manual way, which is with NumPy singular value decomposition. And so I'm going to Google that and look at it here. <coughs> and um, what, I, what I can see is that it's factorized, right? My 2D matrix or 2D array is factorized into uh, something like this, right? I, I, I'm going to get these three parts, U, S, and VH. And I can multiply those things together to hopefully get back to my original, to my original data, right? And so I'm going to do that. And there's some options here. I'm not going to get into this in detail because we're going to be. I just want to give an intuition before we move on to um, doing it with sklearn. But there's this option here called full matrices, and I and I have to disable that for this to work. Okay, so down here, uh, I'm going to come up with some sort of matrix, and um, maybe I'll do something like this. I'll say like a range. And I'll have, um, I don't know, like 10 columns and, and eight rows. Oops, sorry. Let me think how I'll do this. I may have 80. Then I'm going to reshape to say I want, you know, eight, uh, eight rows and then 10 columns. Great, I have that. And let me put this in the data frame. So I'm going to say pd.data frame, just like that. And, um, and, and maybe just for the sake of this example, uh, I'm going to give some nice column names here. And um, and so I could do that like this. I could say something like columns equals you know, column one and, and then so on, right? I can type a bunch of stuff there. Um, instead, I'm just going to name name them A, B, C, D, and so on. And, and so actually, if I import string in, in Python, um, it has all these nice things like string dot, if I hit tab here, um, if I wanted to, I could see you know all the lowercase or uppercase letters. And I see that's just a giant string there. And actually, if I convert this thing to a list, I have something I could pass in, right? So, so that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to, I want to get 10 of these things, right? I want to have 10, I may have 10 columns. I grab that, and here I'm going to say columns equals list of that piece. Okay, so I'm going to do that, and now I can see I have this nice, nice thing. Okay, so let me try to do my decomposition on it. And, um, and so I'm going to say uh, numpy.linearalgebra.svd. And what can I pass in here? I have to pass in my matrix, which is, you know, I could have like an array from numpy. I can also directly pass in a data frame, uh, such as my df, right? Because it's based on, on the, those numpy objects. And I'm going to say full 
matrices equals false. And, uh, and this is going to return those three pieces to me. It's going to be U, S, and then VH. And, and, and eventually, these are kind of, um, I'm not going to get into where these uh, uh, um, variable names are coming from. Eventually, I'm going to put on names that are kind of more intuitive. Uh, but I run that, and then I should be able to get these three things. I just kind of print those all out. Great, I have these three different parts. And, and so based on what it was telling me <coughs> back in um, back over here, this is how I should be able to reconstruct the original thing. And, and so I'm going to grab this, right? I'm going to say, let's see what I have here. And, um, and I get this big matrix here. Maybe I should just try to kind of put this down to a new, a new cell. I'm going to do that. I'm going to put that in a data frame too, like this. Right, and I have that all in a data frame. And uh, and this one is actually the same size as my original one, right? If I look at the shape of it, right, it's an eight by ten, which is good, right? I mean, my goal is that I do these multiplications together, and I can reproduce the, the original one. Let me put back on the original column names, which we lost. So I'll say, um, uh, well, whatever the original column names were there. And, um, and, and just, it's a little hard to see that this is the same. So I'm just going to do some rounding. I say round to two points. And, uh, and you can see, except for these being floats now, it's the same thing. Maybe, maybe if I made these floats up here as well, it's a little easier to see that these are identical, right? I can break, uh, I can break this, um, this big matrix into these three little ones. And then I can multiply them back together like, like this. And, and, and you can see in this um, uh, factorization as well, right? I, I have one that's a element-wise operation and then another one that's an actual dot product. But the factorization is working, right? I have these three pieces and I can use that to reconstruct um, and to reconstruct my final piece, right? So that's the, the main point, right, that I can do that. Um, in, in the next video, I'm gonna show how we can actually uh, use these three pieces in interesting ways to compress the data or to understand a little bit more about what's going on.